Hello. Uh, yeah, so hi, my name is Kevin Gannon. Uh, I'm a solutions architect and principal engineer at PwC's digital engineering team here in Belfast. Um, I started there about 18 months ago um, and I have a wee slide to talk about um, my past and stuff there, so I'll not do that right now. But uh, what we do have is attack the blockchain. So again, everything with me is kind of movie related. So um, I kind of, I was cycling through a bunch of kind of what, what movie titles could we go with and stuff or, or, or anything kind of block or chain related. Um, some of the guys were touting, you know, Jenny from the block chain and I don't clearly have the booty for that. And there was, there was new kids in the block chain and I don't have the dance moves for that. So we stuck with the movies and uh, attacked the block one. Uh, the close second was Chain Reaction, so Block Chain Reaction. With, it was a pretty good Gary Murray's movie, check it out. Um, so yeah, I'm here to talk about blockchain, um, but first I just wanted to kind of talk about how brilliant I think the likes of today is in terms of uh, giving NI developers the chance to kind of have a bit of a forum, you know, homegrown uh, NI people. And that's really where I've come from, um, just as you can see that, hopefully you can read it. Um, where uh, I went to Queen's University here, studied computer science, um, Worked in lagging technologies um, throughout the years. Moved on to CyberSource here in Belfast, which became Visa. Uh, then left there and started a, a startup, um, which was a Bitcoin um, payment processor uh, here in Belfast. And that then kind of, from, from Bitcoin to blockchain, made a bit of a logical leap to uh, PwC in their kind of blockchain practice. So that's a bit about me. And by the way, the green, everything has to be, have a wee bit of green in there somewhere. So if you see a slide that has no green, call it out. Um, so I really want to talk a bit about blockchain, where it came from. Um, obviously, it, it has kind of close connections to Bitcoin, um, but I think it has a lot more connections to technologies that have been around long since before that. So obviously, Bitcoin's been around the, the better part of a decade, and we've obviously had the likes of distributed systems, uh, distributed information, and, and now I guess we're in the arena of distributed trust. Um, but a lot of these technologies are kind of coming to the fore to enable the likes of Bitcoin and blockchain technologies to actually come to the fore. So the likes of cloud, peer-to-peer -peer cryptography, all used in a kind of a symbiosis in order to uh, enable uh, the likes of these distributed ledgers to, to work out. Um, in terms of the, the ledger itself, you know, I, my, my imagery isn't the best here, but uh, certainly we're talking about nodes, connected nodes, uh, and a single shared source of truth. So well, one of the great things I think about uh, in terms of blockchain is as and when a blockchain node disappears from the network, everything else can still take place. Everything else is still in order. Everything else can still can still work. And then as and when that, that node comes back into play, it just syncs up with the rest of the system, the, the rest of the ecosystem, and then uh, fast forward into, into real time effectively. So again, a really great tenet of uh, the decentralized nature of blockchain. Uh, in terms of a lot of the kind of benefits that you get, you know, around security, privacy, transparency, visibility, pr programmability, and tr tamper-proof. Again, it, it very much depends on how you want to build your, your applications, how you want to you know, build your solution. Um, but certainly, a lot of those aspects come to the fore whenever you talk about hashing and cryptography and, and proof of provenance around uh, immutability of transactions that are on your actual ledger. Um, finally, oh yes, the recircle. I like the recircle thing. Uh, We've kind of, well, I've kind of helped break things down around different areas that blockchain are kind of relevant. And um, one of the big ones, obviously, with Bitcoin uh, in the digital currency space, there's a whole host of, um, of digital currencies out there. I assume at least somebody here has Bitcoin. Hans, who has Bitcoin? Who has loads? Who should be retiring? No. If you had a got it about 2007, 2008, you'd probably be in a retired space right now. Um, but obviously, it's taken a, a, a bit of a, a bit of a bolster around price and stuff like that there. So again, Bitcoin is a, is a bit of an investment vehicle there. Um, but taking the actual blockchain itself uh, to then see where can you actually, you know, outside of digital currency, we see digital assets. There's been a whole raft of startups there around. Uh, there's the likes of Everledger, who's kind of doing proof of provenance of diamonds, you know, um, blood diamonds and stuff like that, in order to trace those types of things. The likes of uh, Arknet here in Belfast is doing that with uh, food produce and stuff like that as well. Um, in the area of smart contracts, we've got, you know, again, there are blockchain fabrics that we'll get onto. Some believe in smart contracts, some don't, but are effectively having executable code on your blockchain that runs as, as and when transactions hit and sync with the network. Um, and then the likes of identity. So no matter, no matter who you talk to, you know, 
to any kind of solution uh, and any kind of production grade enterprise scale uh, platform needs to be able to identify who is, is typically transacting on your platform. Uh, is it you know, land registry, who owns my house or who owns this, this uh, plot of land? Uh, and then how do you actually transfer ownership there as well? So there's, diff there's diff a whole bunch of kind of areas there and we'll touch on some along the way. Um, but again, getting back to the technology side of things and solutioning, what makes for a good blockchain solution? Obviously, uh, as fantastic technologists and developers that we are in this room, uh, there's the typical stuff of what do you, what problem are you trying to solve, you know, what, you know and, and the various tenets that go with that. I think what, what gets bolstered whenever you actually start thinking about blockchain and its decentralized nature uh, is very much around the data and who's participating in, in your process. Um, who needs to share that data, change the data, transfer data, who needs to be able to participate in the network. Um, requirement for verification, yeah, so in terms of consensus, you know, do you need to have verification that uh, there are permissions or there are safeguards in place that whenever data is actually changing, uh, it's changing in the right way and, and the ecosystem itself uh, lends itself uh, in a blockchain ecosystem in order to, to do that, to, to validate that everybody who's transacting works well and plays well. Um, intermediaries, so yeah, so I, again, it really depends on what, on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve in terms of actually building your applications. Um, but certainly whenever blockchain was first touted, you know, the a whole bunch of kind of trading industries were kind of going, oh no, we're going to die, you know, oh, we're going to go out of business um, because we're going to be disintermediated by this this blockchain uh, application. You know, why, why would anybody need me whenever they can just look, look to the blockchain, anybody can connect and stuff like that. And really the the rationale behind that is, you know, there's, there's a bit of fear there, certainly, but in terms of disruption, it's really how do you enhance the processes and, 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 and how, do you, how do you make things better for everybody in terms of the participating parties uh, and, and those guys will have a place to play anyway in terms of regulators and stuff like that you know they need to be able to you know still look at stuff you know auditors will still exist you know things still need to be eyeballed uh, but certainly if you can put uh, the, the frameworks and, and safeguards in play uh, then you can allow these uh, processes to take place in a fairly automated fashion uh, and again so we've got the likes of transactions interact so as and, as and when parts of the process uh, need to interact where, where typically you may have no interaction, you know, if somebody buys something over here and an invoice system is getting updated over there completely separately, you can now start to bring those things together in terms of supply chain management and um, as and when people need to update their stocks and, stu uh, stock and stuff like that. Um, so blockchain fabric, so the, the underlying uh, tech stack that you can actually build um, blockchain applications with, um, there are quite a lot. Uh, we have done uh, a bunch of work in terms of uh, gauging the landscape and seeing what kind of blockchain systems are out there. Um, these would be our, you know, the kind of top ones that, that I certainly would have played with um, or, or in PwC's big experimented and explored. Um, but certainly the likes of multi-chain uh, as, as an asset management tool is, is fantastic. It's very quick and easy to be able to get up and running with uh, the likes of any, any quick PwCs that you might want to do with you know, playing with the technology. Uh, it's it's very good for digital assets and you know creating the likes of digital currencies or you know if you wanted to create tokens that represented um, physical items in the real world, well, they seems pretty good for that. Uh, and, and and more so, like we, we've um, built some uh, we've built a, pr a proof of concept in the insurance industry around policy placement and tracking and tracing. You know everybody's involvement in in that process with the likes of Ethereum. Again, it's kind of public pri and private. You can you can spin up your own Ethereum nodes and participate in a closed network if you want, or you can run your applications on the, the, the public Ethereum network itself. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool, it's getting a lot of favor at the minute. Again, if anybody's got Ether, go you. Uh, the, the likes of Ether is doing a, a, its turn in terms of digital currency uh, leapfrogging as well. Um, one of the things that I would say from a technology perspective from the likes of Ethereum is it's, you know, the likes of the smart contracts that you write there are in a brand new language, you know, Solidity itself. Um, I, I don't know if anybody's kind of had a how to tinker with that, but again, as any new languages go, there's baby steps and there's various things that people do whenever they're building new languages uh, in order to kind of build safeguards in or not, in the case of what happened with the, the, the likes of the DAO, um, where somebody was able to misappropriate uh, the use of the functions in order to kind of, you know, I don't know if spindle is the word, but you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of what was put into it in the first place. Um, Hyperledger, again, it's got a lot of kind of you know, good stuff going on with it. It's got a big community behind it now that it's, it's, it's backed by the Linux Foundation. Uh, I've marked Go here as, as you know, that it's, it's written in Go and you can write your smart contracts in Go. So, you know, again, an alternative to the likes of Ethereum where 
there's a new language. Anybody who's already versed in the likes of Go can, can get up and running, uh, can get going uh, a, lot, a lot sooner, um, which I think is pretty good in terms of adoption. And um, we'll kind of touch on some, some tooling uh, later on. Um, Monax, again, similar enough to Ethereum, very much a private, private network. Uh, it supports Solidity as well. And you can do pretty much the same types of um, things there. So again, there's, there's been numerous applications that we've built using those. And there are there's just there's loads out there that you, that you could actually be tinkering with yourself if you wanted to have a play. The likes of Chain is out there, Corda, Ripple, and there are a ton. And these are fairly what I would call general purpose blockchains, where you can kind of derive, you know, because they're smart contract driven, minus multi-chain. Uh, Getting Greenspan has an aversion to smart contracts. You can you can look him up. Um, but certainly where smart contracts are in play, it really kind of helps you uh, derive whatever kind of applications you might want to build, and it gives you that flexibility where you can actually do that. Um, whereas there's a, a whole lot of uh, that are coming out on the market uh, that are very much geared towards trading platforms and financial systems and stuff like that, which I haven't really been playing with myself. So that's that. Um, in terms of the, the tools of the trade, so again, we're all engineers, we're all developers. What are the various things that you need in order to build an application? And you know, I just kind of wanted to flag this stuff up as yes, there's 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 blockchain stuff there. there there's there's some sort of specialist coding that, that you that you can have, um, but much like the use of Hyperledger where you're using Go, uh, it's, it should be very familiar to anybody who wants to be able to pick these things up. Um, you know, I, this is certainly isn't an exhaustive list, but it's certainly stuff that we that we'll have used within the past 18 months, and you know, a lot of these hopefully will be familiar to yourselves around you know UI. You know, a lot of the kind of node node stuff can talk directly to some uh, blockchain systems, which again makes it very very quick uh, in, in terms of things being updated. And um, the use of cloud, all you know, everything that you would use to in order to build a and other application, you can use in, uh, whenever you're building blockchain as well. But I, I, I do think there's been a you know, I don't know if it's the myth of the blockchain developer um, that's been around of late, where there's this, there, there's this worldwide shortage of blockchain developers out there. And I, I don't, I really don't think there is. You know, whether or not it's people who aren't interested at the time, but it's certainly not a skill shortage. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the guys, a lot, a lot of you guys will have the, the capability to be doing this. And, and hopefully you will kind of pick up some of that stuff as well. You know, again, it depends. It depends where you're going. It depends what applications you're actually building as to whether or not you'd actually want to. Um, but from a skill set perspective, I would certainly say don't be afraid of it. Uh, okay. So what has the cloud ever done for us? So again, movie reference. Hopefully, a whole bunch of you here as old as me will we'll kind of get that. Um, but yeah. So uh, I was in uh, AWS reInvent at the tail end of last year and uh, spoke with Dad about blockchain. And Amazon Web Services, they haven't really taken up the, the kind of the, the call of uh, providing you know kind of cloud services that much. And to kind of talk to talk to them, they, they do provide their, their their KMS solution, which kind of helps with uh, key management and encryption and stuff like that. Um, which again is leveraged, and again that might go into some of the, the specialisms that you need to have whenever you're dealing with crypto and public key, public private keys and stuff like that. Likewise, Azure has got its um, it's Key Vault system as well, um, both of which are quite good. They've got green in them. I didn't need to color those in, uh, so those guys are actually winning uh, in my book around there. And, uh, Microsoft have got their their BAS, and, uh, and it's not BAS as in cheap. It's like you know, blockchain as a service. So they, they in the uh, Azure uh, marketplace, they have uh, partnered and integrated with a series of blockchain fabrics, where you can then you, you can via their marketplace you can download and actually attach them to your subscription, where they will spin up you. Uh, instances, say, of you know a couple of Ethereum nodes that will enable you to actually talk together and uh, set up the kind of the, the ground rules for that to happen. Uh, I, I do think there's a lot to kind of you know progress in terms of that. You know, we typically don't do that because it's not as flexible. You know, it, it gets you up and running, but as and when you want to add a you know a third node, a fourth node, a fifth node, how you know programmatically, how would you want to do that? We would typically use the likes of uh, infrastructure and code as code in order to be able to, be able to kind of spin up and scale those types of things. Uh, Google Cloud, they don't. I don't think they've really done anything much in terms of um, blockchain. Um, again, I can be corrected there, but they obviously have produced. You know, the likes of Google have produced Kubernetes, which again has been key. I think in terms of being able to kind of spin up and scale uh, any applications that you want to be able to run. Uh, on the on the AWS side, you know, while I was out there uh, in uh, in Vegas, they did talk about how while they've been kind of just laying the groundwork for people to be able to serve up and spin up and do whatever they want in terms of uh, blockchain infrastructure. I do see them coming out as, as, as people who want to actually get in the game as well in terms of you know, Azure has their blockchain as a service. I think Amazon really wants to tail, uh, tailor uh, their services around being able to do that type of stuff as well. Uh, 
So that's kind of me from the technical perspective. I think, you know, again, blockchain, it's, it's, it's new, it's a bit different. Um, what I would kind of say, and again, I think the purpose of the, the, these kind of conferences is great for, is I would encourage you guys to try and you know, have, a look at, have a look at these things. Uh, I, don't, I don't think anything is particularly you know, cumbersome in terms of being able to do that. Uh, you know, spend a bit of time, read some blogs. Money, that's not give me money. That's kind of, if you want to, go and dabble in some cryptocurrencies, you know, go and check out some of those things. You know, spend money on a course, you know, check out some of that stuff. Um, there's meetups that, that, uh, that are happening in the, in the blockchain Bitcoin space. Um, enthuse, yeah, so have fun, you know, dabble, experiment, you know, like, uh, I, I don't think that, you know, certainly whenever I go to work every day, I, I find it, it's, it's good fun because you're, you're, you're tackling, you know, some difficult problems with some innov innovative solutions that could be or may not be appropriate. Uh, and equally engage, you know, the, the guy in the last talk, you know, he had uh, Jean-Luc Picard up there and that's what that reference is with as well. So, you know, make it so, uh, you know, the emerging tech is here, you know, it's not just blockchain, uh, the, the likes of fintechs and the likes of uh, AR, VR and uh, cybersecurity, you know, Belfast and NI in general is, is right for all of this kind of, you know, there's a lot of kind of fantastic talent here and we should be part of that. We should kind of, you know, in the three E's, you know, one of the guys was talking about E-tabs there, but um, we should all just kind of engage with that and, and go with the flow and, and see what's actually out there. And that's me. If anybody's got any questions, queries, concerns, by all means, give me a shout. <laughs> More green. Um, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, right. So I've been using VideoScribe. It's it's a, a, a new kind of tool that you can do in order to kind of spin up videos and spin things around and get them to, to draw things. It's typically SVG based if if you want to go into it as well. But uh, certainly, if you have your uh, your imagery or your text or whatever, you can kind of frame your, your your slides around that and. Uh, get things to spin around, get them to draw it. You can actually get hands to do it as well and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I was playing with my left hand as well. Apparently you can get actually get your, your actual hand to do the drawing for you. Um, but uh, I didn't have the time to, or inclination to kind of spend to do that. Um, but, but you certainly can. Check it out. We have a winner. Every day, <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, again, with, with within PwC, you know, we have access to a whole raft of clients and across different industries. Uh, a whole bunch of guys are kind of interested in the space, and you know, like we literally get emails from people saying, "Can you slap a blockchain in this for me? I'd really like a blockchain, and I'd want it to be green, and I'd want it to be whatever." And you know, well, what do you want to use it for? I don't know, but it's it's pretty cool, and I, and I want one. Um, it, 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 again. It we do run workshops around how, you know, ideation of use cases and whether or not, you know, things are appropriate. Again, I'd kind of refer back to the slide if I didn't need to rewind all that, uh, around the kind of the, the key six criteria, you know, typ typically we would have those, those criteria uh, on, on a whiteboard and then force people to actually go up and tick them and explain why, you know, so do you have multiple parties that need to be able to update the data, you know, are you sure? Or, or is it just a, is it a whole bunch of reads, in which case you're just kind of having a portal where people are reading data or whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah, like the, there's loads of that, yeah. Um, whether that's in FinTech, I, th I think the likes of FS and FinTech see a lot of huge synergies between the likes of Bitcoin and the digital currency and the fact that it's called a ledger and there's transactions and stuff kind of lends itself quite well to that. Um, particularly there's a lot of valid use cases as well, or, or rather I think there are around, you know, healthcare and pharma. Uh, there's, there's other things that people have been looking at around energy and, you know, tracking and tracing, you know, anywhere where you're kind of doing that. Uh, and tends to be quite well suited to the likes of, of, of blockchain applications. But yeah, there's certainly a lot of silly ones out there too. Any more bids? Yes, up from the back there. Le yeah, I, again, security, it, it was up there as, you know, people seem to think that because you, you slapped the blockchain on it, you get security for free. Um, I think there's a lot of cases where, and again, it depends if you're using, you know, a 
pub, you know, public or private or permission kind of uh, blockchain network. But certainly in, a, in the case of a, of a private network, it's no different than how you would secure another application that you're doing. And you know, I think the likes of what's happening with, uh, with the likes of Azure and AWS around their key management systems and stuff like that there in order to uh, secure private keys and stuff like that are really going to be you know, tested over the, over the coming year around, you know, ultimately if people get access to those, your, your, your wonderful blockchain solution doesn't mean much if, if people can actually uh, can, can transact on other people's behalves. But yeah, security, it, it's definitely a, another layer, I think, that you need to kind of uh, look closely at, uh, especially if it's in the, in, in the public arena. Certainly what happened with uh, the, the DAO and, and Ethereum, um, it was a big kind of security loop, um, but again, people would consider it, well, it wasn't really a hack because the, the, the programming language allowed them to do it. Um, but again, that, that was a bit of a security flaw in that which, which they kind of fixed and, and rolled back time and, and space. Hope that helps. Um, I don't know, I think it's a bit of a tricky one um, because blockchain is typically at very much at the back end side of things and um, bringing that to the fore. I think a lot of people like using a lot of kind of front end technologies and you know, which where I, I, it's not really my forte. I, I like kind of, not to be construed the wrong way, but I, I like kind of playing at the back end uh, of integration sides of things and building APIs and stuff. Uh, it's, it, to me, that, that is good fun. In the case of blockchain, anybody that's interested in, in crypto uh, and, and APIs, I think that you know they're always going to have a lot of fun in there as well. Um, I think in order to kind of get people more engaged and, and oh, engaged, it's gone, uh, and involved, um, the likes of these kind of ideation workshops around use cases and actually kind of you know developing and drawing out and planning and designing how would you actually want to you know or could you use a blockchain in, in this instance? I don't think it's enough just to say we will use blockchain for this. You know there has to be a good kind of thing for people to buy into it as well. Uh, well, I only have Bitcoin, so I, er, the rest of them are irrelevant for me at the minute. Uh, I think eth uh, Ether for Ethereum is, is, is in a very interesting place at the minute. Um, there's a lot of uptake on uh, Ethereum, especially in the, uh, in the production side of things as well. Uh, they've recently, uh, there's been a new group around Enterprise Ethereum where they're actually trying to you know, harden and strengthen a lot of the kind of blockchain tenants that are there for them to be production ready. So I think there's going to be a lot of kind of, you know, uh, emphasis on Ethereum, and hence why Ether that powers it is gonna, gonna become a bit more important. Um, but there's a whole raft of them out there, and <laughs> some of them seem to be kinda up in their ante in terms of, or in terms of value and, w and where they can actually play. Um, but in terms of actually powering other blockchain systems, uh, there's nothing that comes to mind at the minute. I, th I think a lot, of, a lot of applications are built on the Bitcoin network itself, which again is a very interesting space, you know, where you can actually peg you know, your, uh, the current state of your blockchain against the Bitcoin blockchain for, uh, for rationale, for, uh, for uh, tracing, traceability. Um, but I think those would kind of be the main two that, that I would be looking at at the minute. Video scribe man, we ha almost had a half question there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think in the, in the identity space, there's a lot of stuff for governments and NGOs and humanitarian aid organizations that are kind of getting into play. Um, I'm due to go to the ID2020 conference in a couple of weeks time in New York, and there's gonna be a lot of kind of emphasis there on blockchain solutions to bring to the fore, um, you know, leveraging public and private kind of partnerships of you know, solving problems, and a lot of it is in, in the identity space. Um, but certainly in terms of government organizations, the likes of land registry, I think you know, would, be, would be a good one. Um, I don't have any others offhand, but there will be a whole bunch of stuff around digital passports and you know, issuance of passports and your actual identity, you know, how you can actually give your identity out to somebody in a, in a structured way where, where I own my own identity and I'm giving you access to that. Or is it, or is it a government issued one where they have access to it, but they let you use it? You know, so there's, there's, again, there's a lot of use cases there around you know, and the, the purest kind of Bitcoin blockchain side of things would be give people back their, their data and governments don't really like doing that. So we'll see where that goes, the jury's out. Cool, thank you.